try to imagine all life as you know it stopping instantaneously in every try to imagine all life as you know it stopping instantaneously in every molecule in your body exploding at the speed of light total protonic reversal protonic reversal protonic reversal with your host Kamen Neutron broadcasting from a secret underground lair in Milwaukee, Wisconsin gigantic middle finger to everything that is rock about music rock and roll and corporate power the thing is though if you don't laugh you're gonna go on a killing spree with sharp and nails hold it hold it hold it hold it hold it confidence of a hero or a fool i wasn't exactly certain which could not be more professional it's That's like a science thing, right? Indeed, indeed. Indeed it is. It is a science thing. It's a science place. It's a scientific fact. We are all up in your face. It is time once again for the one, the only, Protonic Reversal. Welcome to it. Welcome to it. And also, welcome to it. Here we are. Here we are. February already. February 23. I don't I don't even know what I'm writing on my checks at this point. Uh, tonight, we're going to have a special guest. Everyone's very special on the show, of course. But uh, Kevin Monis, he hasn't been on for literal years, but he has been on this show before, and it was a good time. I should know I was there. And he's got not one, but two new records, suckers. So uh, one of which is a collab with uh, the incredible Trevor Dunn, also former guest of the show, friend of the show. And one is a new record by Hepatitis, the fantastic band that uh, he plays in. Weirdly, though, it is almost three years to the day, January 31st, 2020. Uh, anyway, uh, I, of course, insist that everybody be very clean shaven for this show. So I, I hope he got I hope he got the memo. Uh, let me just do this pre-roll spiel. So first of all, before we get into it, welcome to Conan Neutron's Proton Reversal. I'm your host, Conan Neutron. I am a rock and roll lifer who has toured and recorded for over 23 years. Wilson for the band Neutron and the Secret Friends. Music is a huge part of my life, and I use the format of this very long-running podcast to talk about music with musicians whose work I enjoy and respect. Folks, the Mary May Not Be Household names do something very special. This is episode 320. If this is your first time listening to the show, all the archives are at protonicreversal.com and are always free. No ones, no sponsors, no kidding. And if you'd like to support the show and get episodes sooner, you can give $1 a month to patreon.com slash protonconversal. And if you like the show or even just a single episode, please feel free to share it along, like, subscribe, or post a review. All that helps people find the show. It's just a darn nice thing to do. So like I said, I hope you got this, uh, hope you got this memo. I, I only have clean shaven guests on, on this show. So uh... <laughs> Kevin, welcome back. How you doing? I see you got the uh, your manager was very confused. It was like I don't understand why he needs to be clean shaven. That's not his thing. But okay. Was that thing loud? Could you hear it? That was pretty loud. Yeah, it's it's a oh, cool. Uh, Kevin, welcome back, man. It's literally I it's it's trippy. It's almost three years to the day since you were on last. I just checked. That's that trippy. Out. That is trippy. You've been busy. You've been you've been busy. Now what's crazy is I remember at that time you were about to embark on a tour. <laughs> there was a uh, hepatitis and smelvin's um yeah remember that remember that remember that so one? it was before the it was before corona right before the covid hit absolutely Dang. oh that's right it busted out right after that tour yep so uh kind of crazy mm -hmm. and didn't have that planned it sort of worked out that way uh but you've got not one two records two two people yeah uh, did you have that plan that they'll come out at the same time, or is that just how it all shook out? Well, they were, yeah, it's kind of how it shook out because they were done, not Trevor done, they were completed. <laughs> we're Trevor and done. Uh, it's not done till it's Trevor done. That's right. Uh, that's very true. Um, they're completed, and uh, 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 Rock as Hell, Johan, uh, uh, Joachim, rather, um, there was a big, uh, uh, uh hold up at, at uh, the pressing plant because of the virus. They were backed up so far that it got pushed to the beginning of the year, this year. 
And you know, he just said, why don't we just do them together? And I thought, okay. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> Well, and you have a pretty long relationship with Rock as hell. I mean, you that that great record. Yeah, they've been uh, great. He's been great. Uh, you know, they uh, Blue Fat Pussy's on there. Um, well, I, and we, we talked last time about there being kind of a unifying aesthetic to a lot of the hepatitis stuff too, uh, with Gina's oh, artwork sorry. as well. And yeah. you know, it, it's kind of you got a little world that you've built up, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do you think that? Uh, so, but tell me how the record with Trevor came about. I think, you know, it was just during the, sh the lockdown and no one was really, it was, you know, it was kind of hard to do stuff in person when you couldn't. I don't really remember. I feel like I just, I feel like I one day recorded this just really <laughs> worthless, noisy, disgusting, maybe 90 seconds <laughs> of music. And then I just, I don't know why I thought, well, because he's Trevor, you know, who, who doesn't want to work with Trevor? And I just sent it to him and I said, you, you want to put, oh, I think I had the idea for a while of trying to do something live over the internet and I couldn't make it work. And I just asked him, do you want to do that? You know, can you put something into this? And he's like, yeah. yeah, sure. And then I was thinking, I was like, he can't put anything to that. So I sent him a, <laughs> it was just, you know, and so I, I did something a little less kooky and I sent him that. And he did something and he goes, you want me to do something to that first thing? And I was like, sure. And he sent this like really beautiful bowed uh, part that went along with it. And it just yeah. went from there. Oh, we put out, I know what, we put out a, because I was at the time during the break, me and my wife did a whole bunch of lathe cuts, 10 inch. That's right. Yes. That's right. how it came about. And I said, hey, you want to do one of these? Because we do super short runs. And said, sure. And that's something that uh, a lot of people maybe that are are less from the crafty world maybe don't understand that like that's like a thing. There's like a machine that you that like right. that does that. Like it's a whole situation. Um, right, and they do them in real time, meaning it takes as long to cut each record as how long the music is. So it's hard to do. Very, so like I think we made thirty, so that took him, you know, three hundred hours or whatever the fuck it was. Yeah. Yeah, and it's and and there's a certain degree of like degradation almost oh, with them sure. too. Yeah, so they don't they're not as high fidelity at all. They're not stereo even. <clears throat> but we did one. And I was like, I like this sound fine. It kind of gives it a different, you know. Obviously, it gives it a different feel. We did a bunch of them. They were really fun. And the guy we did it with printed the sleeves. Did a great job. So we liked them. So I did, I think I. I was doing a bunch anyway, so I just said, "Hey, Trevor, you want to do?" And he was sure. Yeah. I, well, it's it's a cool record. It's very uh, there's there's there doesn't seem like there's a whole lot of rules necessarily with it. Oh, like the rule is <laughs> no rules. Yeah, yeah. It kind of seems like it's uh, the best kind of all over the place is how I would characterize it. Yeah, uh, yeah. Each song just happened the way it happened. There was no never uh, anything. Yeah, I, and was I was. It, how did you come up with a sort of like, all right, I'll make a thing and send it to you. Was it just more like free flowing? Like how, how did that, how did that come to pass? Was it just like whenever someone had, you know, how did we actually do it? We both would just, I mean, we just record in our houses. I record a lot of my stuff on the phone, honestly. And then um, uh, we just sent recordings to each other and sometimes he'd start it. Sometimes I'd start it. Yeah. We just said, you know, Go for it. And once in a while, we might have sent it back again, but I don't think we did very much of that. And uh, the only instruction I ever remember, I said this in another interview, that I, I, the only thing I ever remember any of us saying about uh, structuring the song was him. He'd sent me something, and I said, great. And he said, oh, I was hoping you'd add something to the last part. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well. Yeah, easy enough. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you guys are both very interesting players, but very different kinds of players. So it's kind of interesting to see uh, see you guys putting something together in that way. Who was doing the, uh, I mean, they used to call it a Grand Theft Audio. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> who was, who was uh, sourcing the samples and stuff? Was, it, was that both you guys? Was that what was he kind of heading he that? Did most, I think he did that. I don't know. I don't remember using any samples. I know he used Bukowski and Marilyn Monroe. Yeah. 
That might have been the main ones. And I, I didn't know they were coming until I heard them. You know? <laughs> well, well, it's, cool. it's cool. I mean, they're, they're used they're used as a way that where it's like an instrument. Uh, Say it? It's used in a way that where it's kind of like an instrument in and of itself. Oh, absolutely. Uh, rather I loved what you did with it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't think I used a single sample. Did you... Was this just like a hey, let's make a thing for the sake of making a thing, or did you have an yeah. idea of just that this is this as easy as that? It really is as easy as that. We we did the 10 inch, and I don't remember if Jokin brought it up or if we decided, I don't know, just the idea said, Oh, let's make a full length, you know. And I think I asked Jokin, or, or maybe he offered, I don't remember, just, you know, would you do vinyl? And he said, Sure, he's a big fan of Trevor's, who isn't? So, you know, it was, yeah, well, yeah. And I think we used two songs from the 10 inch. Did you think about this in terms of kind of like it being just like a, like an open canvas almost? Uh, yeah. I mean, once I, I mean, I already knew how good Trevor was, but that very first thing, honestly, it's in one of the songs. It's part of one. Of, it was such a, it was just one, one time turning on all my pedals, turning on my phone and just going, <laughs> And when he sent back this amazing bowed bass accompaniment, that's when I was like, oh, we can do anything. Yeah, the, the incongruity of having kind of these harsh elements, but having this like incredibly like, beautiful pieces to it. Like it's it's mm -hmm. it's interesting because it's mm -hmm. you just don't find a lot of music like that. Like it's usually one it's usually either like Mare's bow or <laughs> right, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I really uh, we talked about one thing we did talk about is that I really wanted it to be cheerful and not, you know, depressing or or because uh, it's so easy to do that with more abstract music for some reason. Yeah. And it was, and you know, what I brought this up in another interview too. what kind of inspired me. Have you ever no one seems to have heard of him, ever heard of Davey Williams, the guitar player? Davey Williams. I don't think yeah, so. nobody knows him. He passed away a few years ago, but he did this totally abstract guitar stuff, you know, really, but it was, it's always cheerful. You can always tell it's him. And yeah. you just go, Oh, ha, you never, you never feel weird or off when you listen to him. And I was like, Oh, I really like that aspect. So I kind of, he influenced me a lot in that sense. Do you think, well, and that's an interesting point that uh, <laughs> I've heard it described by people that Let's just go and say we're not fan of genre of music, but that a lot of quote unquote noise music is like hard work to have to listen to. Oh, sure. <laughs> and, and I love that music, but I didn't want to do it. Right, right. But the idea of like, hey, making something kind of fun or something kind of like. like right. I was kind of doing that with hepatitis, too. It was like. Let's just try something new. And I, it starts to sometimes it feels easier to do that, you know, to go the darker way, which I don't get me wrong. I love all that stuff, but I wanted to try to. Yeah, I wanted to bring in some good times. Look at that! I gave myself a razor burn. <laughs> That's what happens. That's what happens when you when you're shaving for a bit. I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you appreciate the sacrifice, nonetheless. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think it's notable to, and, and we got into this last time a bit about how the how hepatitis has like kind of grown as a band, and uh, oh, for sure, I'm a true and, and, and everything like. I mean, just with the addition of Paul, of course, who's just like, you know, a not so secret weapon. Um, right. Incredible drummer, but a, a tuneful, like one man harmonist. Like, like yeah, for sure. Play. Yeah. We, I mean, we use his singing a lot because he's so good at it. You know? Yeah. Well, I mean, why wouldn't you? Right. <laughs> uh, yeah. But I also like that I feel like hepatitis uh, with the record that, um, you know, blue fat pussy and and dot 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 and all that I, I think you guys kind of found like a new stride uh with what you were doing like the kind of gnarly bits were still there but there's also kind of this um <laughs> cool horror soundtrack like riff oh, thing I'll going on you know what i mean yeah like i'll take that I, and i think a lot of fans aspire to that and i think few actually get there Ooh, excuse me i gotta turn it over the light so i just light in here How's that? Does that look cool? Yeah, that looks that looks awesome. That's very pastoral. You got is that a peep behind you that you have? Yeah, that's a giant peep. Good eye. Wow. Look at that. Look, I'll put there. Oh, look uh, at you. Look at you. Yeah. Very good. I can't really see him. Now it looks like I'm underwater. 
Okay. <laughs> He's like you're like an aquarium, the cool aquarium. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get some bubbles going. Uh, but oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But but yeah, this. I mean, this record. How did this one come together? Were you guys in a, in a the same league? as the one with Trevor's? We couldn't really get together. Mm -hmm. We had a few bits and pieces. Those guys, they kind of. I think they got the ball rolling when I think about it because they had those guys, meaning Sterling and Paul, had uh, recorded some stuff. Paul gets really good at drum sounds when he records himself. So they were sending me bits and then uh, it's doing some editing, taking parts out and moving stuff around, which is really nice to be able to do. It's hard to do that live, but it was really good to do live in the studio or at rehearsal. But uh, it was great. So I could, oh, and then I'd add something, send it back and like that. And then I started some and sent them some, uh, sent it to them emails. Yeah. And then once we put the songs together, uh, uh, Jim Goodwin, how do you pronounce that? Sudo, Suedo, Suedo Beast, uh, mixed them. He's so good. I've known him forever. Yeah. And he, uh, he ran with them, really made both records sound great. Is it different? How is it different, I guess, is to when you're dealing with music that you're not in a loud room? with it all happening at the same time, you're listening to it like, you know, the computer speakers, you're listening to it like in headphones or something along those lines. And you're engaging with it in a different way than when you have. I like listen to them in the TV speakers that I'm not even sitting in front of. <laughs> so it's like, it's an ambient, <laughs> but in the other room. Yeah. <laughs> well, because you don't have that. And the reason I ask about is, is you don't have that physicality of having like, you know, yeah, yeah. or like, you know, something's being hit right next to you. That's, that's Yeah. I think, I don't know if I could have done, it would have been a lot, it was easy now after having made a jillion records in the early days. I don't know if I could have even have done yeah. it because of what you're saying without the impact. But now I think I'm pretty familiar with what that impact is. I didn't really think about it till you brought it up. Now I can just sort of hear the music and, and I kind of, years ago, I put away that idea that it has to sound, that we have to be able to do it live exactly the same or that it has to sound the same. Yeah. Now it's more about making that, recording sound the way I want. And that really helps to do it that way. Well, cause there's almost, and I think of this one, I think of bands that like, you know, record their records like mostly live or whatever, that there are certain things that you feel in like a space when you're in a room with like a rest of a band playing sure. that doesn't always get over on a record. And, and there's certain things you can do recorded that like would sound horrible and, in like in like a room at the same time, it sounded amazing on the record. Well, I think a lot of that evolved just from doing jillions of records. Where yeah. I mean, I've made I don't know, I've made at least forty records, and it just you find your. I found my way through certain things. You know that what things became. Maybe what what was important changed. Maybe that. Maybe that. Because uh, you're right. In the earliest days of the cows, that was you were looking for that live impact. And now it's more not so much about that. It's more about constructing these songs that I think are really good that will have impact live, but maybe not the same impact. I've separated the impacts, I think, in a way that I think is good. Because there's live, there's recorded. They, they don't have to be the same thing. Yeah. Right, right. I think it's fine what we did before, too. But now, I mean, I don't like that. Oh, oh. And we'll be back with Kevin in a second here, I guess. Um you pushed the wrong button. So, of course, the new records are uh, available <clears throat> on the internet. Yeah, where we all live. There we go. Okay. okay. All right. Um, oh, that really freed me up once I realized, first of all, well, a lot of that I learned from the Melvins. You, it doesn't have to be the same arrangements. It doesn't have to, anything. You can do whatever you want live. That's why live is cool. Well, and you can, they can, there can be an evolution in form, right? You could, you can like go back and listen to it and be like, oh, we didn't play it like that at all. But like, that's yeah. what the song is. You know? Which I like. Yeah. It's and cool. Yeah. And that's the, I guess that's kind of like the pleasure of bringing things into a live environment versus just only making records as you get to get. There, there are parts on record that I really love, but I wouldn't do that part live. Yeah. It's not, it's not called for. <laughs> I, I mean, if you know what I mean, it's like, oh, we don't really need to do that part. How much, uh, how much base VI are on these? 
Uh, you know what it's named. That's good. That always irritates Kronk to no end. Yeah, um, was, we talked about it last time. That's how I remember. Because <laughs> I thought yeah, that was yeah. <laughs> um, any of the base. It's all the VI. Yeah. <laughs> Did you ever find a supplier for strings or no? No, but I put together a uh, set that I can get for not very much. Combi you know, one set and then two extra strings for each. I got I got it worked out. <laughs> That's the problem with having an esoteric instrument. You've got to put a little work into that side of it rather yeah, than... I did a little, cause also because I use these dumb tunings so the tension's not right. And yeah. You know the story. But it's nice because it allows you to do some stuff where, uh, again, you get that almost unsettling, like, that's close to what? What is, what's happening there? It's kind of like, yeah. it sounds like a note's being bent when it isn't, like that kind of... Um, yeah, you know, I mean, that's what I like about different tunings. That wherever my fingers are used to going, it creates a whole different, they're different notes than they normally would be. And I've taken to, uh, well, I've done this before in the past, but now I really do it a lot. The, the two skinny strings. I don't even know if that's the bottom or the top. I, I used to say the bottom and then I was, I was swiftly corrected that it's the top. And, and yeah, my two top strings, which are on the bottom. Sure. Um, is it, why is it on the bottom of the neck? Exactly. Like, well, they're the top in, in, in scale, but I, I do an octave apart D, so it's kind of a natural, chorusy, strange sound. And with the slide, it's really cool. Yeah, there's the, um, there, there's, there was a band we actually played with last year uh, in Wyoming that the guy played a 12 string. And like, I didn't, you know, it was like far enough away. That I'm like, oh, is it like a chorus pedal on or something? What is that? Yeah. Oh no, it's like he's it's a string. It's like it's like the oldest yeah. school way of doing that. That's crazy. Yeah, it's a neat sound. It also takes a lot of pressure off worrying about whether it's in tune. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, oh no, it's my sound, man. It's my yeah, sound. that's a microtone. A lawyer, a music lawyer, said that to me in the cows, and I've never laughed so hard in the world. <laughs> they were trying to be polite. No, I know you deal with microtones. <laughs> no, we're out of tune. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's that's I, I love it. That's 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 fantastic. Like they're trying to give you unearned credit for. Well, yeah, they're trying to politely tell us that you you sound really weird and we don't like it. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, it's uh, that's good. I mean, so from a perspective of performing live, like you know, I don't think we actually talked about this last time, but I mean, hepatitis, you're the front man. More or less, as if, if front man there. Yeah, means. There. yeah, sure. If there has to be, when I do most of the singing, so I think that's how that works. Yeah, there's a little bit of Sterling in there, but it's 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 oh, sure. mostly. Good. You know how I was saying that we really like using Paul because he's such a good singer. Yeah, I really like using Sterling because he's such a bad singer. It really, <laughs> it really gives it something cool. <laughs> it's a study in contrast. I like it a lot, and he's so willing to just go for it. I'll just go, just you know. One song, there's a song on the new record that's coming out, and I didn't even send him the music. He sent him <laughs> some lyrics, and I said, sing this like an opera, which, of course, it sounded nothing like an opera, but it's great. I think I know the one you're talking about, and I was I was actually wondering, I was like, wow, that's a that's a strange vocal decision. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah but I didn't even that. hear the music. He didn't, I didn't, my kid made up at least half of those lyrics, and that's I just, awesome. I was like, those are great lyrics, and then... Uh, that's awesome. <laughs> I just said, I think I said... I said, sing this into your phone like an opera person. And then, yeah. and then I just made it fit the song. That's fantastic. He, he, and I, there's I a weird he, organ. There's, oh, sorry. What? Oh, I was going to say, I, he just seems game for weird stuff like that. Certainly. No ego. Like, I, I, That's the best thing about a band member. No ego. Yeah, he, he's a, uh, you know, he, he's not, I believe, if I, if I remember correctly, he's an autodidact on his, uh, on, on guitar, right? Like he's a self-taught. <laughs> he's a what uh yeah i think we uh all are well maybe not paul i certainly See, that's, that's, the fancy, that's the fancy word autodidact doesn't sound awesome like that sounds cool yeah, i've heard the word but i don't think i bothered to look it up yeah it's it's, it's I, I know because i have an autodidact in many things i'm like it sounds way more badass if i say autodidact other than the fact that i just learned myself and probably you're making me realize my uh, human interactions are that autodidact <laughs> and then it's it doesn't serve me very well not, not always, no. Yeah. But he's like he has a very unique musical sensibility because of that. Because he's he's coming at it from a place that's <laughs> objectively right. maybe not musically correct, but like it, it's a unique. Uh, it's I unique. love playing with him. 
this is a great example of how egoless he is. The first show we'd ever done, and I think that he'd ever done in his life with anyone. And, and I said, hey, I want you to do the first song. And it was basically him speak singing for 20 minutes. First song, <laughs> first song of his, not 20 minutes, but like eight minutes. First yeah. song of his entire life. And he didn't even blink. He goes, all right. And he did it. Just that's, game. Game that's some it. balls. Yeah. yeah. Good for him, man. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it's it's such a nice, but it's an interesting pairing because uh, you know, Paul and his way, and I'm not saying that like, you know, he, he's like, you know, uh, oh, right. Mr. Music Theory, but Paul is like so coming from a different place from it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's uh it's an interesting alchemy, is probably is probably the best way that, that I can put it. That I, I don't think I've seen that so much in a lot of bands. It's good. It's good. Uh, it's good for me to let people do what they do and encourage them because it's natural for anyone who plays my to like, Oh, what is it you want? I'll do that. And for me, it's, yeah. <clears throat> it's better if I just say, well, now's your big chance to do all that crap. No one lets you do, <laughs> you know what I mean? Someone's always saying yeah. to the drummer, you know, oh, you're overplaying. It's like overplay your guts out. That's fine. Go for it. Yeah. I Go prefer it. Same for uh, mixing with Jim, you know, I've known him a long time. I've already hung over the shoulder of every producer of my record. And now, you know, I can just, and I trust him. Same with Toshi. I just go, just do it. Yeah. Well, to, well, Toshi is a, he's, he's such a good listener on things that like, yeah. again, if you're, if you're hiring someone for their expertise, perhaps you should consider using their expertise. Exactly. Exactly. And Jim really loved it. There was one super weird mix he did that we used and he, he sent it to me and he wrote, if you don't like this mix, fuck you. <laughs> so, so needless to say we used it <laughs> I was gonna say, well <laughs> and it's a, such a chaotic crazy mix but i was just like okay a any mixing notes that come with a built-in confrontation is you, yeah. you know it's got to be good it's got to be he was adding oh he added this really long sample on the first song of of uh the hepatitis album that woman talking i don't know if you remember it yeah 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 yeah, yeah. he just added that <laughs> arbitrarily yeah i was like what is that? And he told me, I went, oh, sounds cool. And it really is great. Yeah. But I didn't well, know it till I heard it. I, I, I've, yeah. Salmon sandwiches. There, there's a lot. That, that's my, that's Dave from the God Bullies. Is it really? Oh, okay. I, I was, I was, I was very curious about that. Um, but uh, he said that sentence in me to me when I told him the album title. And I said, oh, that's just wonderful. Record yourself and send me that. Right, right, right. Yeah, that, it's 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 a it's a it's a David Lynchian style uh, baffling sentence to be to be said and have. There's not much difference between Livingstone and Lynch. Yeah, <laughs> I had my card on the show. That was that, that was good. I I, I have. Do you know card. David? No, no. I I only he's, I, he's I, fantastic. He's I only know so I know funny. Mike through this show, and that's the only from, from God believes. Card. Yeah. He's, he's they're, they're real mission. different from each other. They're very different. <laughs> I'm very aware. Yeah. 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 I, I mean, mean, everyone's probably, hard's probably different from everyone. So he's uh yeah, reputationally I know David, but I don't yeah, we, yeah. I, I would love I've known, I've known Mike as long as I've known David. Yeah. He's he's a uh, <laughs> unique unique individuals, and I, I do mean that as he well. might be what you call a character. Yeah, a bit of a character, yeah. Yeah. I like that on so, so of course actually, actually I don't think I've said it's uneat is the name of the record so that's oh, why right. they un, uneat those salmon sandwiches right uh, right uh, it's kind of another example of it of of a you guys doing kind of a bluesy thing without being really the blues uh, to a certain degree for some of it I've uh, heard that I think that's always true of the stuff I do but it's not intentional it's just. I, I guess I have an underlying blues influence that you're just a blues man. I'm bluesy. <laughs> <laughs> I you know, I don't know. It's true, but I mean I never I never think, oh, let's do something bluesy. It just I think it's because when I when I learned when I taught myself to play the guitar, I played along to the most simplest blues stuff. That's how I learned. Yeah. So that's probably why. Yeah, there's a very kind of primal <laughs> just like kind of like nastiness to it that uh that, that well, comes thank through. You. and, and it, well, I, yeah i mean like look it's it's i'm, I'm all for it. It, it it's just that it's uh 
when you know when I say bluesy, I don't mean like that blues record that Aerosmith made. I don't mean no, like I know what you mean though. My wife says it all the time. Yeah. She said, Oh, the cows were blues, you know. Yeah. And it's I mean, in in a way, I absolutely. Uh, but it, it, it's interesting that like it's still intense, don't get me wrong. It's not like it's like a an, an easy listen or anything along those lines. You're not gonna hurt my feelings, don't worry, Conan. <laughs> <laughs> but it's 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 it it hit a little different than the other records. Like it definitely feels oh, really? like, yeah, it definitely feels more like a record listening experience, I think, than the, um, some of the other ones. I mean, maybe the last one, but like in a what different. What do you mean? Way. Like it's more uh, unified? Is that what you mean? I, I think there's, I think there's more headphone stuff happening. Um, That's Jim. Yeah, like so, and, and there's nothing wrong with that. I'm, I'm never mad at that. <laughs> right, right, me either. I think I did even at one point say to him, "I really like panning," and he said. <laughs> I did. I think I said that before he even started mixing, and he said, "Me too." <laughs> and then low panning there was, yes. Uh, and he also introduced me to that we used as an influence. I'd never listened to Low, that band Low, really. Oh, they're great. He, they're very unique. Yeah. Yeah. And um, he, that lady just died. And he, um, R.I.P. to Mimi. Yeah, he sent me that. Oh, what's it called? Uh, d d uh, double negative. Do you know this record? Yeah. Uh, yeah that's a good record and it's uh i think they use some 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 producer that doesn't normally do that kind of music i don't know what he was a hip-hop producer or something but there's yeah. tons of static just <laughs> do the whole record it's a brutal sounding record seriously and i was like oh so we definitely use that as a yeah a jumping point because we were both like that's so cool yeah that's a that's a band that definitely not afraid to take a big swing at something yeah. and like, hey, this is we're just doing this now and it's like oh all right, yeah. all right. Uh, they've always been peripherally i've been peripherally aware of them since the cows because they were from minnesota too but i just never yeah. zach uh zach sally who played in uh that band for a while very cool guy he he also played in that band the hand with dale flatham um mm -hmm. Kind of like a noisier dude, I guess, you mm -hmm. like by, by nature, but uh total sweetheart. But the the fellow I can't remember the guy who plays bass. I've met him too. I can't remember his name. Terrible. Uh, but I've always had a lot of time for that band, even when I'm it's it's like mm -hmm. a Nick Cave thing, right? Where it's like I don't yeah. love every Nick Cave record, but I'm always like, know. interested. You know, it's like yeah. good for him. That's awesome. Yeah, like I said, it was not an intentional avoidance, it's just no reason. But that he really that record really made sense to me. Yeah, well, and I and it's funny you mentioned that because I can totally hear that in this. Uh, yeah, in this hepatitis record now. After, after yeah, sure. for sure, Jim brought that to the table. Uh, you know the one thing. So we talked a lot last time about sort of like your your journey into music coming up from Nebraska, Alice Cooper band. You know, like uh -huh, good memory. Yeah, formative influence, which you know, jealous because I was a little too young to know. Yeah, anything. yeah at the time uh and then joining the cows uh, forming the cows and and like uh kind of having that be a thing i've had shannon on since then mm. so yeah it's interesting i always I like really having, it. it's like the rashomon effect right that movie rashomon where it's like the same events but you hear like different people's uh kurosawa uh seven sound uh, I, know, I know him i think i've only seen one movie of his i'm sorry i'm sorry i, that, I mean i'm don't be I've seen sorry movies you've never seen so there well, I'd be excited. Yeah. I mean, like you're, I'm stoked for you. You get to see Kurosawa film for the first time. That's amazing. Uh, but I always think it's interesting when you kind of hear different takes on how things went. So last time you were on, you talked about how like, um, when you guys started in with cows that you would just like, grind on like stuff for like the longest time, like, you know, bring yeah. bring in like a 12 pack and take some acid and just more than a 12 pack. But anyway, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I don't mean to short sell you, Kevin. Sorry. <laughs> um, and then, you know, and then Shannon being not necessarily someone you think of as like the front person, but kind of one of the more the funniest dudes that, you know, right? Like, just I like would a think really of him as the front person anyway. But but like, but before he played in the band, like you, it wasn't oh, something you oh, actually thought yeah, of yeah, yeah. as a role for him or something along those lines. Right, right, right. Uh, what I would be interested if you would, if you would indulge me, because since we are talking about your new records, is I'd like to actually talk about the records. Because what I realized is we didn't actually talk anything about any of the records. We talked about the epochs of time, like that epochs of time. Uh, but we didn't really talk about each of the records and sort of the uh, various 
eras that you had with him and the, the various the time in history that you were would you be interested in uh, in just doing some of that hopefully we can try uh, and you know just whatever it doesn't have to be like some some great uh no no we'll just see how my memory is yeah yeah i was gonna see whatever you remember if it's some just bizarre memory for of it that's fine a lot too. of records yeah that, you, you do have a lot where we can you know you, you could do game show rules and pass <laughs> if you don't remember that's fine I, I i saw a list someone had posted of all the melvin's records i'd been on and yeah. it was way more than i thought <laughs> you're on a lot of them i, mean, I didn't you know that <laughs> it, it's it got, it's almost i would say it's almost shocking but it's not shocking because they're, they're, they're but i'm just saying i i was very surprised <laughs> you're, did you, I don't even remember that one. Yeah. Uh, well, so take it back to the beginning. Take it back. Okay. Let's go to Taint Morbius Tandem, like just way early on. Like let's er, early one. early cows. Yeah, the first one. What about? Oh, you want me to say something? Yeah. What? what yeah. What do you What do you remember about the record? What do you remember about the band being? <laughs> that was. I, I remember it pretty well because it was so cool. I mean, we were. I don't think we'd been together a year when we made that record. And it was just, we we knew that we had something. <laughs> you know, you could just tell, it was like, okay, let's, and we were excited and it was a weird experience. We'd never been in the studio really. And the guy who owned the studio was a really kind of a straight laced guy. And he found us a little bit shocking, but we got through it. And the guys that were working with us knew us and knew the music. So it was a great experience. And the first time, maybe you had this happen. I. And maybe it's because it was such rudimentary mixing and recording times, but it didn't ever sound like a record to me. I was like, does this sound how a record's meant to sound? I, I don't know what I was trying to process, but, but uh, yeah, I stand by that record. There's nothing I don't like about it. It's a unique sounding record. And uh, it, it, well, it, it's a wild thing to start off with that. Uh, the Philip Glass song, like your iteration. That was Shannon's <laughs> idea. First song, like I mean, bold. Yeah, I love that cover. That was Shannon's idea, and I remember thinking, I don't know, but then we did it. It was great. It, I, you know, it's it's for me. It was um, it's like almost a statement of intent. They're like, all right, don't you have no idea what you're gonna be able to expect from these guys? Because yeah, this this, this is how they roll. I remember uh, he was very he, specific about the beat. He's like, I really want it to be the simplest, like high, hardcore beat. <laughs> you know, right. Slap it out and stuff. Yeah, yeah, slap a ham. <laughs> yeah, yeah. uh th there's a lot of uh, grinding honking that i mean there's a lot happening right there do you feel like there's a good representation of where you guys were when that when it was like about 87 right yeah for time. sure uh anything strike you from the band kind of evolving into what became the cows and being a live act around that time like how it all came together like did, did it just seem natural did it seem the best kind of unnatural it seemed natural. I mean, it, you know, you know, you, I'm sure you remember. It's just, it takes a second to be used to being on stage, but it was really nothing that alcohol and, and drugs couldn't take care of. And, and, <laughs> you know, we in Minneapolis at that time, there was a really strong music scene, but it was all music that we really rubbed us the wrong way. And so, yeah. you know, and there was all we'd see all these shows. And we're just like, oh, fuck, you know, the obvious reference point is the butthole surfers. It, you know, obviously, it's like, oh, this job needs to be filled live. There's this, right. it needs to be done. And, you know, and then there's all the, whatever, Minuteman. My brother and I went to, he was our drummer then. We went to so yeah. many shows. It was like, there's nothing like this. And it was all the music we loved. So he and I basically learned together how to play the bass and the drums. That's awesome. And, and I think uh, Thor doesn't even like bundle surfers, right? If I remember correctly. <laughs> Beyond doesn't like them. He, <laughs> That's hilarious. We took acid and went and see them, and he was so angry. He left early, and I went, and he had destroyed our entire house. <laughs> I mean, he destroyed it. I was like, Fuck. really? You really yeah. didn't like it. He didn't like the vibe. <laughs> I mean, I guess it's kind of nice to provoke a strong reaction. Yeah. <laughs> right. Even if right, he's he's one. he's so insane. That's not that's just the tip of it. But anyway. So yeah, that that I think that's cool. It shows kind of that we he's Mr. Stones and and uh, uh, Neil Young, which I love too. But I sure as fuck don't hear it in his playing. 
which is crazy, right? Because you would think you would you would hear some of the classic rock in his playing. It's like I I couldn't even tell you where he's coming from. He's like one of the most players in the world. You know, absolutely. You know what's interesting about his playing is we'd record something, and you've heard that like the whole song would just be this insane wall of seemingly chaotic, unstructured shit, right? And then he could double it, and it would be exactly the same. Because he knew he so, it somehow he had it worked out in, in his. In his he had it all. He had notes he would write out. It's, it's crazy. Pretty astounding. Like it, I, he I said that he that. told me that the, a lot of his sound and playing was based on the fact that he couldn't hear himself over us. <laughs> it was it was volume based. Okay. It was yeah. So that's why so much high end because he couldn't hear himself. <laughs> well, well, it makes sense. I mean, they're, they're those absolutely makes sense. You know, and there's there's such prominent uh, low frequency happening too. It's like it's, uh, yeah, I get it. My bass isn't very my bass isn't very bassy, so it really may it really overlaps with a lot of the same area, you know. So that makes it hard for him. All the mids, yeah, yeah. Uh, so then, uh, speaking of David Livingstone, uh, Daddy has a tail. It's the one up next, and that's the, that was the first one with Tom, right? That was, uh, yeah. He was a big cows fan. We didn't really realize that. And uh, yeah, that was super fun. We had those songs. Cows really, I didn't realize till in retrospect, we rehearsed a fucking lot. We just yeah. thought we were having a lot of fun, but we really had all our songs nailed. And we recorded that overnight in Kalamazoo after a show in a basement. Did it all at once. I think he recorded on a VCR tape that I don't know why that is, but I'm pretty sure that's true. And I, you'd have to ask him. I don't know what that means. Okay. Yeah. And it, it's a that's a it's a rough but terrifying mix. I really like it. Yeah, and that's the one you got that uh, 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 sh uh, shaking shaking all over. Um, yeah. <laughs> just, that's a good cover, huh? It is a good cover. So, is that? Uh, Johnny, Johnny Kid and the Pirates is that? Um... I think so. The ver yeah, I think so. I think the version that I, uh, I, I don't know if those guys well, like he ran around with an eye patch. If I remember right, that dude. Like, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. But I think we were going off the Who cover. Well, ex why wouldn't you? That's that's yeah, yeah. one. That's it because that's on Life from Weeds. If I remember. Right. Yeah, yeah. And I think that was the only version I was familiar with personally. Shocking amount of covers on Life from Leeds, but <laughs> but. Yeah. It's a great record. I, I don't know if you did you I, are you, I don't know if you're a CCR fan or not. Oh sure. Love it. Did, did you see that movie that came out on uh I guess it was was it Netflix or whatever? Um it's kind of like half documentary and half like just really ripping live show. And my my two takeaways that, that were not <laughs> what uh, what is it, is it a it rips uh that's one. Uh, too many covers for my taste for a band that wrote so many amazing songs. Like, why are you, why are you doing that? And also they have those like, um, coily cords, like the, I don't know what you call them, but they're coiled. Oh, like they're, yeah. And they're, it's like, dude, you're five feet from your amp. And it looks like you're going to get unplugged and you're playing to this stadium full of people. Like get a longer cord, bro. You can, you can afford it. It's pretty funny. Yeah, but but Look at it this way. That's kind of cool. It is kind of cool. It's definitely unique. And they're eccentric. Uh, they're eccentric people. I highly recommend checking that out. I thought that was I will. Really, I love really them. Cool watch. Yeah, I, I'm a big CCR fan. Me too. For sure. Um the oh, oh so there's uh the sugar daddy ones, Chow is on that also, right? There's a version of there's a version of Chow that's sugar on that. Daddy. That's the uh the, the split, um the Melvin <laughs> split where they did oh. where they did you know this. You should know this, Kevin. You don't know this? You were this? <laughs> Um, where it's no. like Melvin's on one side and like a, 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 someone else in the other. The cows one. There's a, there's a version. Of, there's a version. Of that. That's it. That's the story. Pretty cool, I think. <laughs> is this something that came out after the cows. Yeah. Oh yeah. This is like. Yeah, okay. Now I know what you're talking oh, about. You, yeah. This is like a few years ago. This is. Uh, yeah. They just used the original cows version, didn't they? Actually, when I say a few years ago, I guess I mean twelve years ago. So. Never yeah, I know, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yikes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, they just so, used the orig original cows version, right? I, I never I never A B'd them. I don't know. I, I'm pretty sure. I don't even remember what song it is, so <laughs> that'd be uh, a good step in the right direction. 
I'm sure I'm sure we got money for it. <laughs> you know, Buzz is a, a generous guy who really is interested in music. So I, and he was a big fan of the cows, too. So I'm sure he was being kind. And so at that point, Tony Oliveri is in the band, right? He's playing drums uh, mm -hmm. for, for this one. And, Which uh, one? For uh, where ostensibly we talk about Daddy as a tail. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't remember for sure. Yeah. Uh, any any other memories from around that time uh, with, you know, with Tony starting in? He had to. We had to hire Tony because my brother had to move away. <laughs> he had to move away and let things cool off. And uh, uh, I don't know how many records was he even. On? I it's a blur. I know it was him and then Norm and then Freddie. Yeah. Well, other than that, I mean, he was good to go. He was enthusiastic. Yeah. We did some touring with him. I don't know if we did a lot. God, it's just a, a blur of joy. I don't remember <laughs> anything distinct. Uh, there's some good. That was the first time I'd ever heard you do slide based. Uh, yeah. I don't know if I did it on the first record. You're probably right. Uh, well, I, I think I might have heard. Well, it. you know, well, that wasn't slide. Chow single didn't that come out before the album? The Chow single, maybe it did. I don't know. I, I, but I guess I didn't use slide on that either. <laughs> uh, and I love that you know. Last time we <laughs> talked about you talked about being bluesy, right? I, the, I love yeah. that uh, you just sort of improvise your own slides for <laughs> for a long. All time. right, a piece of glass. Yeah, yeah. A bone. All it did was hurt my finger. It didn't work at all. The bone is the one that got me because I just got a, a vision of like the Flintstones or something. Well, I think I'd heard that, you know, T-bone. I thought, oh, I must use a bone. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's in the name. Right. So I took a bone probably from a T-bone steak. No, I think it was one of those round bones. <laughs> I mean, I was, how the fuck would I know? I don't know. I was trying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, did, did, you, did you ever have an epiphany? Like, oh, you can just buy those at a store. I don't remember how I switched. Yeah, I must have discovered that somehow. <laughs> you know, because they, they don't really make them for the bass, or they didn't. So I just had to find a very thick guitar one because those light ones, all you hear is surface noise. Yeah, well, because it, it doesn't have the uh, the heft, the heft right. to pull off. And I'm not a delicate player. I don't know if you've ever noticed that. I did notice that. Yeah, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's a thing you're kind of known for. It. Yeah, Gina, come say hi. Oh. This is our artist, Gina Miles. Res Ma. Resident, resident artist. Resident artist. Fantastic. Hello. Hi. Have nice. you met yeah, I've met Conan. Yeah, I've met. Yeah. It's good to see you. She nice does all our her. artwork. She's quite good. I I am very I'm a fan. I think it's okay, fantastic. that's enough. Well done. Okay. <laughs> <Bye>. <laughs> there you go. A little cameo, cameo appearance. Yeah, cameo. Uh so okay, so that's that's the second record, third record. A feat in impudent snobs. Ah, yes. Yeah. How do you feel about stole, that? One? Stole the title from uh, Spiro Agnew, <laughs> who was really uh, Richard Nixon's vice president. Yeah. And I believe he used that phrase to describe the media. <laughs> and I thought it was a pretty good phrase. It is a good phrase. And that cover is from a plastic surgery book that I had that I can't find. And that kid's nose was just that way. Oh, really? I just assumed it was like a cartoon or something. That's uh, actually like real. Oh, it was wow. from a plastic surgery book, and that was his nose. That's harsh. Right? But <laughs> yet cute. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> just like life. Uh, there's a, oh, that's, that's got what? Dancing Boy Cocaine Horror Blues. That's, that's, a, that, that's a good That's tune. a bluesy song. Yeah. <laughs> it's got blues in the title. That's how you know right. it's a blues song. There, that's how you know it's bluesy. I honestly <laughs> don't remember what songs are on which. Uh, do you remember what was happening in, in the band around that time? Oh, no. We were, you know, we were playing and touring a lot. That's really, we rehearsed a lot. We toured a lot. We really liked what we were doing and we really had nothing else in our lives. Yeah. Playing a and lot. I, mean, I like to think it kind of saved the world a little bit of a hassle because it gave us something, kept us out of the way a little bit. Like doing <laughs> yeah, I, I felt like I, yeah, it just seemed like a car full of clowns that were clumsy clowns that were driving around doing petty, petty crimes. 
<laughs> and at least the crimes are of a musical nature rather than you know anything that could really and i think we were basically kind of a, a vaudeville act seriously it was we really loved vaudeville and i think it shows there's a good amount yeah there's a good there's a good amount of of, of a certain kind of absurdity of vaudeville a la alice cooper or something but through, through radio. i was just gonna say that he's yeah. very vaudeville also for sure i mean yeah, <laughs> you know, a yeah. little bit. A little bit. I mean, he twirls his cane and everything. Like when he, when he, like the whole bit where he gets his head chopped off and stuff. Like that. Uh, yeah. It's like, come on, what is that? Yeah, about? and so yeah, I mean that was always there. Uh, we were yeah. huge. Hugh, well, Shannon and I were huge fans of Legendary Stardust Cowboy, and that might even be where we got the bugle from. Maybe the idea, which is so. Uh, it's used in such an interesting way because it's almost yeah. like um, I mean, there's a few songs where it's almost like it's the it's like the uh, the yes and or the punchline for the joke or something uh, musically yeah, it just comes sure. comes in and just <laughs> it's it, I, and I'm I'm hard pressed to think of another band that's really done that now that now that I think about it. Well, that's what I think made uh, Summertime Blues so good. Yeah. Oh. Absolutely. He had a slide trombone for a while that someone ran over it. It's big and weird, so we just got him a boy. It was a Boy Scout bugle. It said BSA right on it. It slid no more after that. It was it right, slide right, right. Right. Sliding was done. It was unslid. Uh, Pistica, nineteen ninety one. Man, that was. It was a full album. I remember that. And Hazelmeyer was not into some of it, so he asked us if we'd do a. I don't remember how many songs he cut or what they were. So we did that. And it's a good, great record. Do you, you, so that's interesting. Was it, was it, what, what was his beef? What was it? What was his? Thing? I didn't like the songs. I think I don't remember. Cause he was hemming and he was hemming and lying. You could tell something was bugging him, but he didn't, you know, he didn't like, he didn't like being bossy, but I think we just went fine. You know? Yeah. You can't always hear your own thing. You get hypnotized. I mean, I think hitting the wall is sort of like if, if there's one song that people usually have heard from cows, it's hitting the wall. Yeah, which is I funny because I made that riff up sort of making fun of grunge in general. <laughs> really? OK. I didn't, want, I didn't want to play it, that riff. And, and Shannon just begging me, come on, just play that riff. I was like, it's, I'm fucking making fun of what I think is shitty music. <laughs> and it turned, like you said, it turned into a song everybody liked. Yeah, no, it, it's it's like a lot of people's kind of first entry point go to for cows. Yeah. Music, which it's catchy. Is, it's a catchy tune. And I don't even know why. I mean, it doesn't bother me at all now, but I remember at the time I was like, oh, come on. It just seemed, it just seemed ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> sure. No, I get it. I mean, yeah, it makes, it, it makes sense. Um, it sounded like third rate stooges to me, but whatever. I'm missing on there too. That's a, that's, that's a good tune. Missing. I love missing. Yeah, that's one of my favorites. We it covered was, it with the Melvins. I was gonna say Electro Retard, right? That was where you. Yeah, and that was the first record I ever recorded with those guys, and I wasn't that comfortable. I was kind of nervous, and Buzz brought it up because I want to do that song. Uh, I think if I remember correctly, I think it was on the show. You you said that the the very first thing you recorded them was Youth of America, right? Like yeah. Was, hey, there you go. All I've right. never even heard the song, which is which blows my mind. Like it's I was busy. Because it, it, it's like a song that I feel like that song, and I love the Wipers dearly, but I feel like I that. Too. But when you hear it, you're like, "Oh yeah, I remember that one. That's the one." Nah, nah, nah. Uh, I toured with them. Yeah, <laughs> and I still didn't really. I don't know. I, I, I get a little distracted sometimes. Right. Having a drink during that one, I'll talk. I may have been, but I, yeah, I love that song. And it's yeah, I mean the bass. I didn't do anything on that bass on that. I just pedaled. Yeah, it's gonna hold it down. I mean, there's, there's no, I, I don't mind at all. It's it was appropriate, but yeah, that's a that's a that's a good uh, well, and that the other things on Electro Retard, there's like uh, that I love that record. There's like alternate versions of like other songs and stuff. We're just like, all right, what if this was like a video? Game? That was really weird for me, but it was a great introduction because I'd never played with those guys, and like I think I did Revolve. Yeah, he just. He just go, I I didn't know that song. And he's like, well, just add something. Like that was, I'd never had that. No one ever said that to me. So it was really fun. And then I was like, they're not going to, this isn't what they want. 
Yeah. And then I do it and you go, okay, sounds great. Now let's do this song. He had me sing on, uh, sing uh, delicate harmonies on missing. That's right. Me? Yeah. And I'd never done it. They really taught me so much. Those guys. It's almost like a torch song or something on that version. Yeah. Like yeah. Really kind of lounge vibes, which is not. Yeah. I, I, yeah. So that, that was a really cool, unusual recording experience. Did was it was it kind of alarming almost to because <laughs> you you're a player that you know you do what you do right and right. Like, he very much wanted you to do what you do with it but then they had stuff an established thing it was a kind of hard right. style uh, for you when you started in with them yeah I you know I dipped my toe in and and then I realized they really do want me to do what I do they actually do want yeah, me to do what instead I do. of just saying it yeah exactly yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I don't know I hadn't thought it through that far but I was surprised because you know it's a it's a vulgar and unrefined style I have. Yeah. But it truly is what they liked, you know. That was not my experience with Tomahawk. <laughs> <laughs> Which, yeah, yeah. D D Dwayne, Dwayne and John were definitely uh, more of the let's do the thing. This oh, yeah, yeah. And I, I really think that Patton was thinking, oh, because he likes all that wild shit. Yeah. But one of the reality of it came, uh, that's uh, – I. I never did that stuff. It's not what anyone wanted. So I was just like, I'm not a session guy, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah. It's hard when someone has an articulated vision and what you do. Yeah. Is it's fine. I'm super glad I did it. I, I feel really lucky. I'm on two cool records. It's, I'm not bitching. I'm just saying it was weird. That was the exact opposite of what happened with the Melvins. Right. Well, that That's was, it. if I remember correctly, <laughs> didn't you get volunteered up for that? Uh, before you were aware that you were involved. <laughs> oh yeah, that was so, that's one of the weirdest feelings I've ever had. Oh, by the way, I volunteered you into this. Here he comes. What? Yeah, yeah. He was. That's when Buzz remembered. He looked down the hall, and here it was a practice place. And Patton was coming down, which wasn't unusual. I knew him. He goes, "Oh, Patton wanted to know if you'd play in some band with him." I was like, "What?" And, and, and by then he's like 15 feet away. <laughs> Here's three seconds to process that information. Yeah, I mean, you know, who's going to say no? No, thanks. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, I'm good. Yeah, that was a cool, weird experience. Not many people. I mean, look at At that point, I'd only been in the Cows and Melvins and then Tomahawk. That's a yeah. pretty funny <laughs> road. It's a pretty wild set of uh, yeah, yeah. characters, right? Yeah. Uh, okay, so let's. Uh, uh, so, Afropistica is uh, Cunning Stunts. Fifth rack. No, cutting stunts. Right. I don't know. Am I wrong? Am I wrong? Hold on. I can look it up. I don't Let's know. Look. I thought cutting stunts was earlier. How the fuck would I think? Yeah. Cutting, that's... cutting stunts is 92. I'm right. I'm right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what do you know? You're only there. <laughs> yeah. That's our slick album. <laughs> yeah, well, but it's, got, it, it's got that kind of blue note looking cover. Uh, like, I yeah. Think about yeah. it. The jazz it's record. It's a cover from, uh, shit, I can't think of his name. Anyway, it's cover of a good record. Uh, it's like um, like Eric it. Dolphy or something, right? Yeah. The, yeah. Time out or this time or something like that. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> cutting stunts, world kind of changed, right? Uh, around this time. Mm. Like the, well, there's, to my ears, that was so slick for us. That was Ian. Was that Ian Burgess? Was the Ian Burgess? Yeah, we were super excited to work with him. Yeah. What, what did you do? Black stuff with Albini. Yes, yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah, and he did he did the early poster children stuff. Uh, yeah, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, he did he did a bunch of cool stuff. Um, they could ring that. He came to Minneapolis for that one, and then the next one we went, he had built a studio in France, so we went to France and stayed with him and recorded. What's that record called? The, the, the one, the next one, yeah, was that uh, Orphan's Tragedy? Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyway, the next one we went to France and recorded with him because we liked working with him so much. Nice, nice. Yeah, that's, uh, that, that's uh no, that's um, sex, uh, that's sexy B story. Oh yeah, maybe yeah, that sounds right. The one with Shitbeard on it, right? Oh, come on, I don't know. Okay, no, right, 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 right. Yeah, I think so. That sounds <laughs> right. right. <laughs> I remember the covers more than anything. Well, all right, all right. let's go, let's go back to the first time with Ian Burgess, Cunning Stunts. This is the mm -hmm. uh, uh, that's that's a. Argue. Some people say it's a great, it's your best record for in the cast. Yeah, it's 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 certainly the most. I think the smoothest and maybe the most accessible. I don't know. You got Norm on drums. Yeah, 
for this one. I was totally that? his own style, totally different from anyone else. Yep. Great drummer. He was the original drummer in the Jayhawks. I don't know if I told you that before. You didn't, but Shannon did. And I took yeah, a while yeah. to reconcile that because for me, absent of being around from that, it seemed like different worlds. So it didn't quite yeah. make sense to me, but I, I yeah, get yeah, it. Yeah. You know, like it's, it's norm is Norm. Norm's uh, dead now. The now dead Norm, we call him. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, I love Norm. Uh, I mean, there's, you know, I feel like that's the first one that has like, you know, there's patterns and melodies and, and and things to it. It's 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 less noise dependent, maybe Could if be. that makes sense. Uh, <laughs> was any of that planned, or is that just where you guys were at at the time? No, no, we didn't plan shit. <laughs> we really that. didn't. Planning was not a big strength of the cows. <laughs> I appreciate your candor. Um, I just. I think that was probably partly uh, Ian. I don't know. We just played how we played, and we wrote how we wrote. And I'm, you know, time and playing that much is going to evolve in some direction. Sure. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's, there's a lot of, um, like, it's catchy, but, like, almost uh, simplistic uh, for a lot of these uh, songs, too. Like, it's, you know. It's... What? <laughs> I think it was all pretty simplistic. Well, I mean, like, like, Walks Alone, again, talk about blues, right? It's basically. Oh, yeah, like, that's almost cool. like a Chuck Berry song or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure. I mean, nothing, again, nothing wrong with that. That's weird. I was just thinking about that song. I don't know why. I think I saw a homeless guy. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. As one does. So you wanted to, uh, uh, so you're talking about, so, so Sexy P Story is the one. You know, just if I can, when I think about it, I've gone back to Cunning Stunts and that is not my favorite one. I right. like it, but I think there's a couple songs that I found a little weak and no, I don't remember which ones, but... <laughs> Okay. Did you think it was a good representation of the band at the time? Oh, sure. I always thought that. I never, th I never thought like any of our records, we just blew it. I never thought that. Right. Okay. Hmm. Well, that's good. It's good. It's good not to blow it. Uh, yeah, yeah. In fact, I don't feel like I've ever blown a record. There's some that I, I don't like as much later, but it's all good. It's fine. Uh, so some more touring, more, more playing. Constantly touring. Cool. There's the EP. There's a. Uh, what EP? Uh, what? Oh, yeah, the picture disc? Yeah, the one with the... Yeah, that was pretty fun. That was a weird one. All those little eyeballs on it, did you ever notice them? Yeah, yeah, what about them? Those are Hitler's eyes. Really? That's what the artist told us. I don't even remember who the artist was. Wow, okay. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's pretty cool. I, I mean... So it's fascist eyes, I don't know. I, I have no idea. like hearing Hitler's name, don't they? There's a place on the corner from my house that... It has a Excuse sign up me. that says America's oldest pen store. And I have no pen? way to prove that. Pen, P E N. Yeah, pen. Like writing store? Pen. Have you gone in there? I, I am, yeah, but I have no way to disprove the fact. Are they America's oldest pen store? I don't know. Did you buy any pens? <laughs> I have not actually bought any pens. And we've lived here since 2017. I probably should, huh? Do they have any more? Well, I don't know. Do they have any cool ones? Did you look around a little bit? What's the stock like? Come on, Kona. It's, it's good. They do. Apparently, they do most of their business through mail order these days, but they still oh, got yeah. the storefront. And it's a. Uh... Yeah, the virus. I guess the I guess the virus really killed a lot of, um, you know, those man places where they stick their dicks through holes. I guess it really <laughs> slow. I was reading about that. It really yeah. slowed those down. <laughs> really slowed the glory hole trade down. Yeah. And then later they said, you know, actually, it's probably safer. So. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, America's oldest pen store. I have no way to disprove that information, right? I so, don't know why you would want to. So uh, exactly, but Hitler's eyes. Okay, I can't disprove it. You know. Sure. Oh, I see. Yeah, no, I I just thought it was an interesting oh boy fact, kind of. <laughs> no, it's it's good. Uh, okay, so okay, so then sexy piece stories after that. Um, hmm. that that's the the sixth record. Sexy piece. Oh, okay. Uh, that's okay. the one. It's, it's I remember the cover now. Once I remember the covers, I can kind of. There's a bird in a butt, right? Yeah, that was from this cool book I have about Keach. And that was one of the pictures that. <laughs> really? Okay. Yeah. It's like, that's a cool picture. It, it definitely leads you to wonder what, what exactly is going on, for sure. Uh, I just don't know. The cover, the title was from a weird porn video i had and that was the name of the video 
that's pretty, that's pretty awesome. Submit at the time. I wish I still had that. I can't find it. Uh, that's got that. Was it, is it Jesus Christ Superstar? It's got, it's got mm. the, the, the yeah, 39 lashes. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's it's got that one. Um, I love Jesus Christ Superstar. I think those songs are really good. Yeah, cool record. I have that one on cassette. If you can... <laughs> do you have a cassette player? I do not have a cassette player. I probably still have it in, in, a, in a box over there. I still have all the cassettes. You can find it online. It's probably easier to listen to that way. Yeah. Uh, like oh god uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. see about like Mr. Cancelled on there, right? Uh, oh yeah, that's a good song. That was the beginning of a, a trilogy we did. We did Mr. Cancelled, Mrs. Cancelled. What was the other one? There was another cancelled. I, I only know those two. Am I my Oh, one? maybe I'm wrong. Mr. Cancelled, that title was taken from a, a Mickey Rat comic. Have you ever seen Mickey Rat? Oh yeah, yes, I, I have. I've and time. Wow. he goes into a bank with a, he's trying because he's always sleazy and he's trying to get this check cashed and they go, I'm sorry, we cannot cash your check, Mr. Cancelled. So uh, that's where we got that joke. Uh, see, the, the 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 natural progression would be the cancelled family, right? Yeah, cancelled canceled junior. junior. I thought there was a third one. I guess you're right. I, I just might not be remembering it. I, don't, I mean, no, I, I'm remember, sure you're right. I remember a lot of stuff, but I do not. <laughs> <laughs> and most of it's useless. Uh, Orphan Strategy is the one after that. That's the the one from '94. It's got the, <laughs> the weird. Thing. That title was. <laughs> I wish I could remember the details. I used to keep all these little newspaper clippings when they had funny titles, and it was it was the name of the article, Orphan Strategy, <laughs> and then it was just all this horrible shit that. <laughs> In his family, so I thought that was a pretty great title. Yeah, yeah, no, that, that, that's awesome. Orphan's tragedy. We, we had a uh, oh, okay, so that one's got Cow Island on it. There was a oh, question. Yeah. That, I like that song. That's a good tune. Um, what? So here's a question. I rarely do this, but I think this is interesting. What did you use to create the live loop for the vocal sample? There used to be this. This I would buy gear that I didn't really know what it did. And then just use it live before I learned what it did. So there'd be at least one show that was totally insane. Right, roll was, the bones. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, super loud. There was a thing called a quadriverb back then. It was a rack thing. I, I like I would buy rack effects and not have a rack. You know, I was just like, <laughs> we had pocket money. We're on tour. What's that do? Cool. Yeah, and uh, yeah. it had a little little foot pedal to do the sample and I would do it through my pickups yeah I was running my bass and there's no mic going into it so I just what's it all about and then hit it and it did really short samples and then the only time it would play the sample is if I I built the riff around it because he had to stop the sound and then trigger it and then the so da 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 what's it all yeah, about yeah, yeah. yeah so that was fun and cool nice Oh, by the way, another uh, we got we got an assist from the comments. Tropic of Cancelled is the third one. So there, there ah, is a, there's a third see? one. See, that's a joke about a Henry Miller book title. It's got yeah, Trop, uh, Trop. It's called Asshole of Capricorn. <laughs> <laughs> that one's on horn. That, that's the one. I have that one on cassette too. Oh, but I can't I, even I, remember the song really. Tropic of Cancelled. I was right, sort of. Yeah, you were. You were. Although I think the Cancelled family is. It's pretty good too. Well, yeah, canceled. <laughs> uh, so anyway, song. yeah, orphan strategy. You got yeah, well, pussies and monarchies on there. That's good. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's a good one. That's <laughs> a fine title, if nothing else. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's some great titles on there. Allergic to myself. That's, that's oh yeah. <laughs> I heard a band cover that song one night. It really freaked really? me out. <laughs> In L.A., I'm... was it good? Yeah, it was fine. Made me realize I didn't love that song. Right. It's right, right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I guess. Uh, the oh, the, the <laughs> this is the, what is that? Is that the one with the bucket? Is it, is oh, I don't remember. I remember the song "Bucket." That's the one. Uh, yeah, the uh, fast. <laughs> it's yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so that's Orphan's tragedy. More AMRAP. So, so I guess if we're going to complete the, the, the canceled trilogy, I guess it is a trilogy. 
then we got we got to talk about horn right uh tropica canceled so oh, horn yeah right? am i missing am I, there's a concert video and then there's like the singles and stuff right uh oh, the concert video yeah i saw that once you know this is just a bass bitch but uh i think it's really good but they the way they recorded it is they only did the bass off of a DI line. And what that means is that means you're only hearing the strings thunking. And, you know, I use all these crazy effects. And so none of those, none of the distortion or anything comes through. Yeah. So, uh, you know, weird bass player. All I hear is thunk, thunk, thunk. But other than that, I think it's a, I'm sure nobody else notices that. Other than that, I think it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's it has a tendency when you only hear DI bass in live performances. It sounds kind of click clacky. Uh, Especially for me, I don't. It's not your it's not your sound at all. So I don't play I, clean very often, you know. Yeah, that's a bummer. I guess I only I whatever. I I I, I, I like I, those performances. I think they're cool. I, the one time I saw it, I thought it was great. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay, I got you. Uh, oh yeah. So there's there's the old gold. There's the uh, uh, <laughs> let's talk about that right where you got like all the that's stuff. a hit. Yeah, yeah, it's it's like <laughs> it's the greatest hit so far, right? Yeah, yeah. The uh, the cover art is a swipe from a really old, weird uh, edition of a Camus book. I'm not sure if it was really the fall. Yeah. I think it was the fall. Oh, where the the legs are the the uh, yeah, the, the guys legs. falling. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and I thought, oh, that's cool. Oh, that was cool. I like that. Yeah. Um. So, all right, talk to me about talk to me about Horn. What a great record! <laughs> it's it's it's. <laughs> what's, that to, what's that supposed to be? <laughs> it's it's called that Horn because I used to on a set list. What song was it? We had a song called Horn. We called it Horn. Yeah, I don't even know what song it was, but I would always spell it that way, like a play on whore. W H O R N. Yeah, like whore. Whore. Yeah. Nobody got that joke, but that's okay. It's real subtle. Uh, I guess. <laughs> uh, yeah, and that's, uh, you got what, Freddie on drums at that point? Right? Sure. Sure. <laughs> that's uh, uh, 96. Where, where was, Ooh, how, how, where was the band? Ago. Yeah, it was a while ago. Uh, Horn. What other songs are on there? <laughs> you have, you have. Did you did you just have that ready? Was, was that a thing you just had? <laughs> like, well, what other songs are on that record? I mean, you really uh, like oven. Um, oh, yeah. oven! I like that song a lot. Yeah, it, that's horn. That's a horny one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a cool song. <laughs> you, got you know it. what? That one's another bald faced ripoff, and nobody noticed. Ace riff is note for note the same as European Sun. And nobody ever noticed. Oh wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Wow. I never even thought about that. I've really listened to that. Yeah. <laughs> call, call that out. I was like, oh, that's a great riff. I'm gonna steal it. <laughs> uh there's what that divorcee more is on there. <laughs> that title. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good one. Oh, that's good. Mas no mas. That was a, a boxer that said that. No mas, no mas. I can't remember what his name was. That's awesome. Uh, what's what's? Oh yeah, or, organized meat. I always. Oh yeah, that. I think that's a great song. That's a good tune. Yeah, I really like it. That's another case where I built a riff around a pedal. There's a super useless old pedal. What's it called? Distortion feedback. It's orange. I think. Oh, I used to have it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you and you would like hold down hold if you like kind of. And I would randomly pick up, but you didn't know what note it was going to. And it was just going to do whatever came out of it. Yeah, totally. Yeah, which I really. I wish I had one of those. And so we just, I just made this riff that gave me an excuse to do that. <laughs> I like that song a lot. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good one. Uh, it's bluesy. It is indeed. It is indeed bluesy. It is, it is, this Man. is no. Uh, yeah, the, 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 was it Gift of Life? That's on there too. Get a life? Yeah. Oh, hey, Gift of Life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Martin Rape. Those names are so good. Yeah. 
Uh, and then you got the one that's got the Japanese women speaking the the, la the la last. Oh yeah, one. that was an alarm clock. Yeah. <laughs> I can't remember what was the song. Was it just by itself? Uh, it it I think it's if I remember it's got a secret track and there's like a different version. Um, oh, ouch! Kill. Maybe it was yeah. ouch. Yeah, that's me. It's the only song I ever sang. I think sang. <laughs> <laughs> in quotation marks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Air quotes. Uh, so that's that's horn, W H O R N. Are we finally to the last one? Sorry, and Pig Miner, man. I love that record. Yeah, it's a good record. It's, it's too bad. It's Buzz, yeah, Buzz, Buzz came to town and produced it. You know, he didn't do any knobs, but he's such a great. That was, I think, partly how I ended up in the Melvins because we had so much fun together. We really, we had a good. You know, we worked well together. So I'm thinking because right after that, he kind of asked. me. It wasn't long after that at all that he asked me if I'd do it. And you know you can when you're when you're with someone making a record like that you you get a different window into their their how their mind works right that, yeah yeah it's intimate yeah absolutely yeah yeah we I fucked mean, constantly during that record <laughs> it's very intimate very intimate it's it's passion away at buzz <laughs> uh yeah I mean cool record I it, it's kind yeah, of like it puzzled me at the time, but that's one that I came back. Did to. it? Yeah. It, Did it? I, I was not. I was sort of like I didn't quite know what you were. Didn't talking. like it. No, it sounded like I didn't like it. I just didn't immediately you connect. Did not like it, Conan. Oh, I know. There's plenty of stuff I don't like, but okay. I came back to it and I was like, oh, this is really good. It was a. It was different for sure, man. I like that record. I really like what Buzz brought to the table. I think Cabin Man might oh, be. Yeah. It's one of the best sets of lyrics that Shannon has written. Oh, yeah. Fucking great. Yeah. And that's, yeah. I, I mean, you know, whatever I'm talking about myself, but that super simple bass riff, I, I, that's one of my favorite riffs. I love it. And it. Almost nothing happens in that riff. But I really like that riff. Well, it, nothing happens, but it, it's in a way that's good for the song. I mean, <laughs> which, which is fine. Better than something happening that is not good for the song. Don't patronize me. I'll fucking kill you. <laughs> uh, oh, or, someone's asking about organized meat. Oh yeah, the answer that, is yes. That one has some cool anti bass lines, feedback swirls. I know, I fucking heard it. What the, this is what and, and, oh, there's another effect on there. That what's that warbly? Uh, that's oh, something uh, from the quadruverb. That's something from the quadruverb too. I don't remember what. Okay, so then, there you go. There you go, Ian. Sorry, I didn't mean to insult you. Thanks. Thank you oh. for the comment. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember what it was. Anyway, it's freaking rowdy. <laughs> it's, it's something. Mm. Uh, so, for my taste, not a bad record in the monk in the monkstone. Like they, they are all, uh, you know, they all did what they did. Like some maybe, yeah. have aged better than others. But you know, how do how do you feel about the cow's discography? How do I feel about the cow's what? Discography, like all. Of them. Oh, I, I have zero uh, regrets, or or I think it's. Just exactly what it it's it's what it's just what happened. I don't wish things happened differently. So it's that there's that cliche about Andy Warhol saying, you know, you do a painting, you put it out there, and while everyone's trying to decide if they like it, you start a new one. Yeah. You know, once I'm done with it, it's kind of none of my business what the world does with it, in a way. I like that's a that's a good way that's a good way to look at it for sure. Yeah. I mean, I can't control that. So there's nothing to do with me. <laughs> it's it belongs in the world now, baby. Yeah, it's um, all you. So we talked about last time. I remember about the the trilogy, um, mm. the, the maggot bootlicker, which is my personal favorite. And, I love the bootlicker. I'm with you. When right. Buzz sent me demos, that was the one that really made me want to be in the band, was the bootlicker. I was like, ah, oh, fuck, I got to be on that record. There was something so unique and, and kind of just different about it. Uh, I think in some ways it's their heaviest record. I agree. Yeah. I would agree. Uh, yeah, so you, you, know, you, you hear that and like does it just immediately like strike your imagination? Like, oh, yeah, this is rad. Like, let's look. Let's, That's cool. Let's look in my memory, I'm not sure about this. I think everything was direct. I don't think we even used amps. Just directed to the board, I think. Yeah, I think they'll. I think so. It sounds like it. Uh, and that's, it's almost, well, and it's funny because it's almost like a pop record in its way. Like, I mean, 
Come on. Not, not a bad way. <laughs> no, I know. I'm just joking around. Uh, that, really, that record, I, it's one of my favorites I was ever on for sure. Yeah, and that's a cool era for the band as well. Uh, and I like that, uh, you know, you've got the the maggot. So that's like, hey, everybody that wants like the, the hard and heavy stuff, here it is, right? And you got the bootlicker, which is like the cool, weird, almost like jazzy sometimes, like pop record. Mm-hmm. And then you have, then you have like the the album that kind of plays like a compilation or something because it's got all this. It the, is the, a compilation. Yeah, I, I love it. I think it's I think it's fantastic. yeah, I do too. In my memory, I think we learned and recorded the maggot like in a couple days. I really think we did that one fast. We meaning me. <laughs> <laughs> did you? Learned it, you know. Did, did you? Did you find it? Uh, did you find it easy to pick that stuff up and kind of find find a place in it, or was it was a little bit of a struggle at first? To... Um, no, I mean they're so liberal with letting me bring myself to the table. Their songs are a lot different than the way I write, so that is always weird for me. But I didn't mind; it was great. I remember before I was in the band, Cows had turned toured with uh, Melvin's on uh, I think. It, might have been Lollapalooza or something. And um, what's that? What's that? Hey, Gina, what's that record with? Uh, uh, shit. What's that? Melvin's record. Uh, it has the bit on it. Oh, uh, Stag, right? Stag. Yeah. Stag had just come out. And we when we got, I remember this, we got home from tour. I went home and I because I really liked that record. And I remember I tried to play along with the bit. And I think I went about 20 seconds. I went, nah, I can't do this. And then later, <laughs> later I played it a million yeah. times. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I guess what I'm saying is, yeah, their structures are their own for sure. And they're counting. And, but, you know. Yeah. They have a, where the one they, is. Uh, they made it work, you know. No, it, it's 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 pretty incredible. Um, and yeah. and I, I love the... Like and not just like the the different singers on the Crab Baby too, but you have like like Bogdan does steel guitar, right? Like like that's I think that's super cool. You have uh um, yeah. Elton Kibro doing his doing whatever it is, <laughs> whatever yeah. awesome yeah. stuff he does, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um <laughs> did you did you uh <laughs> I forgot about Leif Garrett being, being on that. Oh yeah, we took him on tour. I re- that's right. So I've okay. All right. So what what can you tell me about uh that guy? Of course, sort of like the He's really the- interesting, smart, nice guy. And but the second drugs come in the mix, which is almost immediately, that all unravels. You know, he's a drug addict. <laughs> yeah, I mean he's an addict, right? Like I mean like we I mean we brought him a long time. He went on all the West Coast and then part of the East Coast. And uh, yeah, he was so great. But then the second he started, he just started looking for what we all look for. And, and then it got a little harder. But it was really fun to have him along. His stories are incredible. There's got to be some incredible stories from that guy. And crazy. I mean, he, I told him, you're so deeply in my subconscious as an image. Yeah. It was almost hard to put them together. Because I'm older, you know, so I, he's like yeah. my age. So I, I, uh, you know, he was really in my head, like Liberace or something. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, I mean, and 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 how ironic to have him as someone who's basically destroyed by fame, sing a song by someone that also was. I think that I think that mis- I think that may have eluded him. That. <laughs> yeah. That thing. It worked though. I mean, it's. it's, it's oh, that was great. I love doing it. It's very I cool. I love doing it. Uh. You know, one of those one of those Melvins when you mentioned all the Melvins records, like, oh, that was a lot of them. Uh, I like that live record, the Phantom Us Melvins big band. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a crazy that was fun. I didn't get this. Wait, no, I did see was one of them at Slim's. I did see one of them. Mm-hmm. I think I did. Yeah, New Year's. I think it was New Year's at Slim's. Uh kind of a wild that was fun. Wild ass thing to try to pull off. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I couldn't believe we did. That stuff's hard. Cause you have like stuff jumping around so much. And then like there's like a pacing to it, clearly. But then also like there's a lot of um 
<laughs> there's a lot going on. Was that was that the first time you had played with Trevor? <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> I think that's the only time I've played with Trevor. Well, other than the record, I don't know. I mean, yeah, but we were never together for the record. Oh, that's true. That's true. Yeah, because that like, was live on stage. He's a New York dude. He's he's a uh, lives in New York. Yeah. Right. Yeah, but he's yeah, from yeah. he's from Humboldt County. I remember this. Yeah, he and Patton went to high school together. Maybe even earlier. I don't know. I, every time he's on, I uh, or any of the Bungle people, I hear from all the Eureka and Arcata fans. <laughs> all the Humboldt yeah, people sure. right in on that. That's, I mean, you'll always hear nice stuff about him because it's true. He's just he's really good. He's he's really can do anything, and he's really nice and not too hard on the eyes. <laughs> That ask Leif Garrett about that. It's it works out yeah, well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I feel super lucky to uh, even know him. <laughs> yeah, it's good. It, it, it's a good. And it's a good record. I I do. Bef before we get off of the Melvin stuff, I think Hostile Ambient Takeover is maybe one of the most underrated Melvin's records. I think a lot of people really like that record. Yeah, that was fun. They really. I felt like that's the one where they gave me the most. Well, it would, it's the longest I've been with them. They really. Shot out some rope to me and let me go, you know. Yeah, it was good. It's fun. Yeah, some great too. I mean that, yeah, that. Da -da 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 that's a. Oh yeah, yeah. And there's one. Um, what, I forget the titles. Where I do a super long. Oh, uh, uh <laughs> the anti vermin seed. Yeah, Man. I told. There's a story I told about that last time we were on. I'm not going to retell it, but like. It was the bane of existence of some backwards hat wearing bros that <laughs> were bumming out the rest of the crowd, uh, and the source of much delight to me that you played like a like it was ripper 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 anti vermin seed and everyone's oh and yeah. it was like, you suck you deserve this <laughs> it was it's so loud and so piercing and so <laughs> relentless like the pacing of that was comedically excellent uh, I probably told that we used to do it as an opener. And really, they just, you know, just let us know when you're done <laughs> for, the, for the intro. And um, it's so long because you're just going for a while. Yeah. Right? You're just going. I can't remember if it was. It was either Trevor was backstage calling Patton or Patton. I think Patton called Trevor because I was doing that and said, yeah, listen to Kevin. What's the deal, bro? <laughs> He's all busy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Uh, what should people know about these new records? Uh, They're fantastic and worth every penny. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I I think anyone anyone who makes music generally likes their newest thing the best. I mean, you kind of said it. I don't think it. I don't think it's like the other stuff in a good way. I think yeah. uh, it's progression. I, hate, I really hate saying this because I know so many people had such a hard time and had a lot of loss and everything, but the virus really helped me out. Like I, I have, I haven't worked that much on music in a long time because I was home all day long. It's all I did. It was so great. I did both those records. I did 20 10 inches with Gina as Lords and Lady Kevin. I did so much music. That's what I wanted okay. to ask you about because no, I, because you, because Lord and Lady Kevin wasn't a thing last time we talked or was barely a thing. It was all right. Uh, yeah, can you tell us a little about that? Because that's got serious. Well, it's Gina, my wife, and yeah. uh, me, and then Dave Lenningstone from uh, uh, God Bullies is in Detroit. He wasn't on the first few records, it's just but once I realized, oh, you know, he and I have worked so much together, I just I love everything that guy does. And once we got him in, I think it really. I did one by myself first. That's what it was. Uh, uh, just Lord Kevin and his slide bass or some shit like that. And I really, and I did a lathe cut and it came, I, I, love, I really liked it. It came out the way I wanted it to. And so we started doing these. Gina's never done music and she fell right into it. Did great. Does great. We've done live shows. Really fun. She fell right into it. And uh, I see the post. I haven't seen it yet, but I've seen, I see the post. I, I really want to do more. It's, it's hard to book, but, uh, I really want to do more. It's fun. Yeah. I mean, is there like any sort of overarching impetus to it other than this to do it? Or do you have any like overall grand design for it? Or oh, come on. You're talking to me. I can barely remember my kid's name. <laughs> um, right. Oh, not really. I mean, 
I always have like vaguely, not so much with uh, a little bit. I kind of look ahead like, oh, what, you know, I kind of form what I'm doing now to what might happen later, but not, not really. Yeah. Not a lot. Uh, is there going to be more recorded material from? Oh, I'm you? sure. Yeah. yeah. Dave sends us stuff. We send him stuff. We're a little backed up right now, but yeah. Yeah. The live stuff's been super fun. I hope we can do more of that. I would love to see it. Yeah. Great. Well, uh, so the so let's let's re they, they call it a reset, folks. Uh, Uneat is oh. the new hepatitis record. Um, right. All new, all new in twenty twenty two. All new, different. I can't see There's that. some different things about it that we've never done before. It's got some acoustic guitar on it, yeah. which has never happened before. Interesting. Pardon? It's it's cool records, different from the last one. But it's 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 cool record. It's different from the last one, but it's uh for sure. I think if you like what it does, it's not like you know, it isn't record. It's not too crazy. <laughs> um, that is uh. Oh yeah, things like things evolve. Did I, did I just, it's, it's did I just whole, like, you're breaking up. Like I make like a Popeye face. I don't understand why. Yeah, I don't. I, I look back at the screen and I look like Popeye. It was like, was oh no, like, I don't get anything cool like that. You just sort of just freeze. Um, Sorry, it's different, but that's just going to happen every time you make a record. I I I really like it. I think Jim's mixing is really good. He did both that and the Trevor record. He did, a lot last, of, um, he did the last, uh, what's that cross band? Patton's in it. Uh, Dead Cross. Yeah. Yeah, he did the last Dead Cross band record <laughs> mix. He mixed it. Dead, the Dead Cross family band? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's, he's really uh, good. I've known him a long time. And, uh, yeah, it's just it's like, a cool, it's a headphone listen. Right. It's, it's, if you, That's what you were it, saying, I've never listened to it on, but yeah, for sure. He's, he's the guy, you know, he did, added so much shit without me asking him to that I liked all of it. Right. But that's, that's uneat. That's, that's one of them. And then, you know, we've actually gone this entire show and we haven't mentioned <clears throat> the name of uh, your record with, with Trevor. Why is that? Everybody has trouble with that name. I mean, we didn't give it a second thought. <laughs> I don't. I just think it's funny. I mean, I, I don't yeah, know. but like, <laughs> I've noticed more in European people. Like, well, that name. <laughs> I think it's the word horror. I guess, but I, uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't find it very shocking, but everyone else does. <laughs> well, it's, it's I'll tell you what. It gets the attention. That's for sure. <laughs> that's so funny to me. It's just a throwaway. Uh, uh, Trevor came up with the title. Okay. And I laughed and I said, "Sounds good." And then I said, where'd you get that? And he said, oh, I made it up. And I said, oh, okay. There you go. Right. That's, 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 uh... that's funny to me. I didn't give it a second thought, but it's come up a lot. <laughs> I, I mean, like I say, it's, it's, uh, it, 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 to me, it, it's a full stop. Oh, wow. Kind of thing. Just like how, uh, uh, Kronk's band, uh, how, how cunts was, where it's like, oh, hello. All right. Yep. Um, why have you not said the name of the Done with Ertmanis record? What are you afraid of? <laughs> maybe, maybe I'll be the, the third canceled in the in the, the canceled trilogy. No, it's it's it's, I, it's, it's look. I it's can I just say? Uh, well, do you want do you do you want me to say it? I'll say it. No, I mean, how's anyone going to know? Crackpot Whorehead. It's Crackpot what? Whorehead. Crack crackpot Whorehead. You yeah. see, it's a it's a joke. Instead yeah. of saying crack whore pothead. Pothead. It's crack pot whore. It's crack. Right, whatever it is. I always get it mixed up. <laughs> yeah, it has nothing to do with anything except for we both laughed when he said it. Yeah. It's, it's an evocative. That's a, that, that, yeah, that's I guess so. <laughs> the thing is, our fans are not going to be. Not, no one's gonna, They know where we're coming from. Our fans. They know where we're coming from. They know what kind yeah. of people we seem to be. It's fine. It's it's, yeah. it's it's a bold move, but uh, it, see, it doesn't feel bold, and it also uh, kind of suits the whole record. It's it's kind of what I said before. It's meant to be maybe chaotic and different and weird, but not unpleasantly so. I like it. I mean, I think it's there's uh you know there, there's a lot of kind of cool stuff that would on its own be almost like kind of ambient sounding, but it kind of yeah, hits different sure. uh, yeah. because of it. Um, you know, it's it's kind of. 
there's parts of it that are unsettling, but I like it, but it's not like it's overall like it's it's got a nice vibe to it. People, the kids, I think so too. I think so too. Thanks for saying that. That I really like that first minute or two. I don't know if you remember it. It's mostly silent. <laughs> yeah, there, there's not there's not a ton to it. Yeah, and I really wanted to use that. So we, you know, and I, I'm really glad we did it as the first thing. But like the mastering guy, people kept going, you know, there's nothing there. Is this, <laughs> is this supposed to be on the record? And I said, oh, sure, there's something there. Yeah, because <laughs> every once in a while there's that. Yeah, I was kind of thinking of the Memnus. Do you ever hear that band? No. What is this? Um, uh, they're when they were 70s, 80s, part of that original industrial stuff. They had oh. records that was kind of like, this, and I thought it was, I just thought it was cool. Well, there's also, oh God, there's some, there's some record where the whole, the whole point was to get the person to turn the record player up to hear it. And then yeah. it would just kind of, go, oh Jesus. You know, Cabin Man did that yes. by accident. I mean, they were playing at the big club, uh, uh, First Avenue in Minneapolis. Uh-huh. And they had cranked the first part to hear it. And I saw our sound man frantically running through the bar to get to the sound booth to tell them that something no. really bad was about to happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was funny. I'm watching him. Wow, look at him go. Stand down, stand down. <laughs> the speakers. You're going to blow out these $10,000 speakers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I thought it was a nice way to start the record. No, well, it, it's... uh. Yeah, it's it's a cozy might be the wrong word, but it, it, it's no, an invite. I like that. I'm invite. glad that that came off. That was the whole point. Yeah, because I remember at some point Trevor saying, "You know, I can write sad, sad riffs all day long." And I said, "Well, then do something really happy." And he did. You know, and it, it was better. I'm glad we did that. That was kind of the approach in the hepatitis too. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think there's weird but fun. Yeah. 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 Uh, well, I, and with the, with the, with the, uh, <laughs> crackpot whorehead record, uh, was it my, my mom, uh, my oh, mom? That's a dumb joke. Check me out. What my the? mom. Oh, how's that for a suck ass joke? Yeah. <laughs> well done. Mm. <laughs> but that's I don't good. think I even explained it to Trevor. <laughs> That's a good. That's a good tune. I mean, that, that's uh. The, the, Which one is it? It's it's like halfway through. It's like a red. Um, I, I, I listen to it digitally, but uh, uh, sing it to me. No, I'm just kidding. Here, I'll find it. Let's find it. Let's see what song I, I it is. Play it for you, I think. But I, don't know. Well, I can do it right here upstairs. I can't. Oh yeah, yeah. Our yeah. hit. Yeah. Our hit. It's like your uh, your dance signal. <laughs> yeah. If you uh, know. Um. I think I already had the riff. Jesus. <laughs> and uh, 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 Lee Offentopoulos, the who drummed on that song, lives in, in Australia. And okay. I think he did two songs. He's a really good drummer. And I it's think I song too, I think, right? Is there just drums on that too? Yeah, yeah. The five sacks. Yeah. The reason it's called that is because Lee only has one sack. That's why it's called five sacks. <laughs> but uh, I think I said to him something like, uh, just to tell him what the feel was, I, there's this old Duke Ellington song, Caravan. Mm -hmm. I said, you know, maybe something like that. And it's exactly what he did. It's great. And then I just had that brace riff. And then uh, Trevor put on all those really <laughs> samples that made me laugh. No, those, those are great. Like, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of that kind of stuff. Yeah, uh, me too. There's two spots where I made a mistake. So I dropped in the sound of a car horn and a shotgun <laughs> to distract from that. Something I've been waiting to do for years. There's, there's, a, there's an old punk rock band from Antioch, California, that did that on their record. Anytime they, because they, I guess they didn't have the ability to go back and punch or fix it or whatever. So they just, just opened up obnoxious sounds every time yeah. there was like a screw up. It was, yeah. it's basically we're very deeply entertaining to listen, frankly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I know Trevor quite enjoyed those samples. So it's, it's all good. <laughs> it's almost like when, uh, when uh, you know, on broadcast television when they had a, uh, have to beep a curse word or something, and then to be yeah, like, yeah, yeah. whatever they put in is like way more jarring than the actual curse word. Where it's like, whoa, there's a, there is a flexi disc a jillion years ago that the angry Samoans did, and those flexi disc guys would bleep stuff. <laughs> I don't know how they manage this, but the bleep isn't the dirty word, so it'd go like, 
He'd go like, bleep, fuck, bleep, shit, bleep. It was really funny. <laughs> that's pretty, that is pretty great, actually. That's, that's yeah, uh, it was really funny. As, as a bit, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Kevin, this has been great. Anything else that we uh, didn't get to? I feel like we got to a lot. Uh, I don't think so. I really appreciate you ha having me do this. It's good to have you back. I can't believe it's been three years, dude. It's yeah, I didn't think it'd been that long. And uh, I guess thanks. I hope people like the record. I'm pretty pleased with them. So whatever that means, almost nothing. <laughs> yeah, people are All pleased right. with all kinds of things. You'd be surprised if people are pleased. That. No, I think I think they're interesting records, and I'll, I'll link to it in the show notes. Interesting is the kiss of death. How'd you like my show? It was interesting. It looked like you were having fun. That's, I was going to say. Oh yeah, that was fun. Whereas like, yeah. oh, so it's, why does it sound like an insult when you say it? All right. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I, I think they're good. I mean, I, I love it's it. too late. Just nobody buy it. Just forget it. Forget, forget it. It's it. Over. It's over, Johnny. Uh, looking, Thanks a lot, Conan. Yeah, looking forward to whenever I can see you next. And uh, thank yeah. you so much. Maybe we could play a show. Maybe we could play a show together. Oh yeah, hear bands do that. Yeah, yeah, that'd be wild. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Take it easy, man. All right, brother. Take care. Okay. There he goes, Kevin Rumanis. What a cool guy. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, is, is these Both these records are good. <laughs> Crackpot Whorehead, as much as I don't want to say it. Uh, great record. Uh, new Hepatitis record, Uneat. Let's hear something from uh, both of these. So let's, let's uh, my mom. See, if you say it aloud, it actually makes sense. But... I didn't really say it aloud, so maybe that's why I didn't get it. Uh, so this is my mom. This is... <laughs> See, it, it makes so much sense when you say it aloud. Uh, this is done and Rumanus, and you can get this on uh, Rock as Hell, put it in the show notes, and then we're going to play a hepatitis song after that, and then we'll be out. So there you go, folks. Uh, and here we go. This is mime, um, M I M E, space O M, mime, um, everybody. Yeah, it makes it makes so much more sense that way. <sighs> Maybe it will play someday too. Who knows? Dare to dream, everybody. There it is. Okay, lossless files. What are you gonna do, folks? <laughs> Thank you.
There you go. It's Doe Deer. Hepatitis, everybody. Hepatitis. Is this thing on? And uh, before that, uh, oh, that's off uh, the record Uneat. I'll put that uh, link in the show notes <coughs> featuring some that? some great Mosquaz uh, Gina artwork. It's wonderful. And uh, before that, we have the Dun Manus Crackpot Whorehead. Uh, my mom. Are we good? Yeah, I get it now. Uh, yeah, there you go. So there you go. That's Lord Kevin. That's Lord Kevin. And it's great to have him back. I can't believe it's been three years. That's nuts. I hope you guys enjoyed that. As always, thank you so much for listening to the show. Uh, it's appreciated. The name of the show is Go Neutrons for Tron Reversal. Thank you so much for listening to it. Uh, you can find this show Thursdays, 8 Eastern, 7 Central, 6 Mountain, 5 Pacific, YouTube, Twitch, whatever other new things coming. Uh, broadcast live, podcasting later. Always free. Always. No ads, no sponsors. No kidding. Protonicreversal.com for those archives. Patreon.com slash Protonicreversal. One dollar a month will get you early access to these shows. Exclusive for a few days until it goes to everybody else. And it helps uh, support the show. That's what you find a point on it. And what we do. We got a lot of stuff in the, in, in the, in the CADs for you. So there we go. Thanks, everyone, for sharing the show around, liking on the various things, subscribing, writing reviews. It all sounds so very lame, but it's how we beat the almighty algorithm, people. Turns sound into electricity. Uh, deeply appreciative of all of y'all. Lots of cool stuff coming. Hear me now? Stay safe out there. Out on Route 128, in the dark and lonely. Check you later. I got my radio on. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? to my top 10. I'd like to thank our sponsor. But we haven't got a sponsor. Not if you were the last man on earth. She was prepared to prove it. This one goes out to a special girl. There is no special girl! It's the... It's the end of radio! The last announcer plays the last record! The last what? Leaves the transmitter! Circles the globe in search of a listener.
if there's no one there to receive Can you hear me now? 